Hello everyone and welcome back to Attorneys React, where all your favorite attorneys react to all the stupid occurring in our world. I'm on civil law. Today's video takes us to the great United Kingdom, where they are conducting a random roadside sobriety checkpoint. This is something that also occurs in the United States. The police set up an area and everyone who comes through that area, they check to make sure that they have a license and also more importantly, check to make sure whether or not they've been driving under the influence and if so, They'll pull them over for a secondary inspection and conduct further tests. Well, what is true in the United States in this respect is also apparently true in the United Kingdom. So let's see how the police respond to this roadside interaction. Can I get that? One moment's hesitation puts this driver under the spotlight. Bring him in. Just push him down the end. Just pulled up short. But with multiple units on standby, there's nowhere to run. Evening, driver. Yeah, my name's Andrew Gilmore from Newcastle Highway Patrol. Have you had anything to drink this evening? I have. How many drinks have you had today, sir? I've had about... I had two bourbon and cokes at Shoal Bay Country Club around 5 o'clock. Yep. Um, Is that all? No. Well, you've had a few more since then, have you? Oh, I've got a long neck here with me. And you've been drinking in the car, have you? Uh-huh. You understand that's an offence, sir? I uh, only if I'm over, isn't it? No, uh, you're not allowed to drink in a motor vi- any alcohol in a motor vehicle whatsoever. Yeah, so that's an open container law, which uh, obviously is also true in many of the United States as well. You can't have an open container in the car. So he has an open container and apparently is drinking from it. So that is of and of itself a violation. It would be a violation in the United States. Now, interestingly, and for by way of legal edification, I am a licensed Virginia lawyer. And Virginia is perhaps unique in this particular respect because Virginia law does not make it illegal for a passenger in a car to have an open container. So technically it is legal in Virginia for a passenger to have open container in a car. Now, if that open container happens to be within reach of the driver, then we get into all sorts of interesting issues, but technically. So I'm not sure I would recommend trying this because you'll get into a dispute about who it was in possession of and who had control of it. But strictly legally speaking, just in case you care, in Virginia, it is not illegal for people other than the driver to be drinking from an open container in a car. The more you know. Wow. Well, that isn't the case in this situation anyway, because he is the driver, but why not bring some legal edification to this dream? It's an offense. So where's the long neck? How much of that have you had? Pull it out. Oh dear. That's from Anna Bay. Damien bought a long neck mixer of bourbon and cola to keep him company on the three hour drive to Sydney. So you're drinking Woodstock bourbon whilst you're driving. Oh dear. So we're drinking mixed drinks too. Okay. We're ambitious over here in the UK. You know, we don't we don't do things lightly. We're not just doing, you know, uh, you know, some sort of light beer. Oh no, no. We're doing the bourbon and coke thing. Well, I appreciate that it's bourbon, at least, appealing to our U.S. sensibilities, because, of course, by law, for it to be bourbon, it has to be manufactured within the United States. So we appreciate you supporting our country, sir. Thank you so much. That's not real good, is it? And that's just topping up on what he had at the club. When was your last sip? Probably about 15 minutes ago. Uh, Is that the only other bourbon that you've consumed, apart from the two at Shoal Bay? Yeah. All right. Having already admitted to drinking whilst driving, Damien is put straight on the tube. What I need to do, put your lips right around and blow. No, 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 no. not hard, nice and steady. All right, just pretend you're blowing up a balloon, but just nice and steady. You don't have to blow the actual backside out of it, okay? And lips around, blow. Thank you, that's fine. Damien's long journey home could now come to a screeching halt. Maybe not. How can that be? That's what I don't understand. But definitely showing up zero. Regardless of the zero results, Officer Gilmore is not impressed. Why would you drink and drive? I'm going to Sydney, so I just thought. But why would you drink alcohol whilst you're driving? It's not going to intoxicate me. How do you know? 
any bit of alcohol. Well, apparently he's right. Apparently he, it will not intoxicate him. So uh, yeah, I, I guess for you, sir, your statement that it will not intoxicate me is, is correct. So that that's interesting as a matter of legal principle. So if we could establish somehow that this guy has some sort of condition that actually prevents him from getting intoxicated by alcohol, that would be an interesting case in the United States on an as applied challenge legally, because it's like, well, the law actually shouldn't apply to me because I can't get intoxicated. That might be an interesting lawsuit if you could somehow establish this guy literally can't get intoxicated, which I'm not sure that's a thing, but assuming it could be, it could be an interesting as applied challenge. Not sure if they do that in the UK, but in the US that could be fun. Especially that amount of alcohol yeah. is gonna have some effect. Apparently not. Oh, okay. So we want to retest you. Now, if that breathalyzer had tested at like 0.1 or 0.2, would we be suspicious that the breathalyzer was faulty then, right? We're only retesting because we didn't get the result we wanted the first time. That seems like, at least in the United States, that could be some sort of due process problem, right? We're only retesting because we didn't get the number that we liked. So I'm not sure again, sure how that would run in the UK, but let's see how test number two goes. I like the first reading. <laughs> I bet you do. I can understand that. Look, what I need you to do, lips around Same again. and blow nice and steady. Go ahead now, blow. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Stop now, thank you. This second test should set the record straight. No, it's all fine. Can you just hop out of the car for me, please? <laughs> want me to pull up? No. Two different tests, two different machines, 0. .000. Well, this man, when he said he drinks, he doesn't get intoxicated. I guess he wasn't lying. We have discovered a unicorn, people. He needs to be tested and figured out how this magic can be brought to us all. I just want you to hop out. Damien says he's had a drink. There's an open bottle of bourbon on the seat and he still blew zero. So could the drinking story be a red herring to mask something else? Ooh. His eyes were slightly dilated. There's a possibility that he might have been under influence of something else. Uh, so therefore, it's always better to be safe. And sorry, I don't want to put another person on the road that might be affected by some illicit drug and then put, you know, our families in, in jeopardy on the road. Well, the officer has a reasonably fair point, and this would apply in the United States as well, of course, because you can be driving while intoxicated, but not intoxicated on alcohol. So just because you blow 0.00, .00 does not mean that you didn't do the DUI. You might be doing the DUI. It's just that the thing that's the I, the intoxicant in this situation is not alcohol. But if you're intoxicated from anything that could interfere with your driving, that prevents a problem. This is why many medications, prescriptions medications in particular, will include warnings not to operate heavy machines including, for example, cars, which are obviously heavy machinery because they can influence your ability to drive. So yes, just the fact he blew 0.00, .00 does not mean that he's not guilty of DUI. He might be guilty of DUI on some other basis. What basis do we have to draw those kinds of conclusions? Well, his speech isn't a little bit irregular. He's acting slightly strange. It could be a neurological condition. It could be something else, obviously, that is not an intoxicant. So this could just be the normal way that he acts for whatever reason. But they do have a reasonably articulable suspicion. So at least if we were in the United States, we could definitely continue this investigation further. So, you know, at least by parallel to US law, we seem to be doing okay. You yeah, haven't had any illicit substances whatsoever? No, mate, I've got to drive back home. No, that's not the issue. I'm saying a lot of people, they're tired, take illicit substances to make sure that they can drive further and further and further. No. Uh, just so over here thinking, just walk up here. If you do me a favour, just walk right across to those offices in a straight line and then turn around and come back for me, thank you. In the absence of a drug testing kit, police put Damien through his paces, the old fashioned way. All right, just take your finger and point, close your eyes and try and point the end of your nose. Yeah, seems All to be doing okay on that. Seem okay. I'm fine. Yeah. All right, mate. Look, <laughs> infringement for that and then you'll be on your way, but. How much is the infringement? Uh, $300 and dollars, I think. Nah. Oh, mate, you can't drink and drive. That's, that's it's just silly. Oh, yeah. We've got to understand that no matter what alcohol we drink, we can't drink it on a motor vehicle. You could put yourself in a position where, you know, you could lose everything. If you haven't got a lid with that, then I'd like you to dispose of it because I'm not going to let you drive with that in the car again and then take the bottle with you. Thank you very much. All right, mate. Expensive lesson. 
I think it should be an expensive lesson, mate. You put yourself at risk and others at risk by doing that, okay? okay. Nice to meet you, Andrew. I wish Lovely. been under Take better easy, circumstances. Mate. Take it easy. Well, I have to say that the UK cops at least have a more jovial, friendly style than a lot of the US cops. So I, I do appreciate their slightly more homey, friendly demeanor, a little bit more casual. I wouldn't think that a police officer would be so cheery in the United States. So I'm not sure what it says about the UK law, but well, they do have a different disposition over there, which is kind of nice. All right, my friends, that brings us to the end of this case from the United Kingdom. And this guy brew 0, 0.00 twice on two different breathalyzers. So despite the fact that he apparently had been drinking that day, despite the fact that he had an open container in his car of bourbon and Coke, despite the fact that he, by his own admission, drank 15 minutes ago, 0, 0.00. So this guy should be studied. We need to figure out why his body doesn't process alcohol and how we can all get this magical, magical technology. Maybe it's something that can save us all. Who knows? But this guy, and he even did great on his roadside sobriety test. He woke, rode in a perfectly straight line and even did the nose to the finger thing perfectly fine. So they let him on his way because they weren't able to determine that he was under any other drugs or illicit substances. So, and because they didn't have any sort of drug testing kit, you know, they didn't have a basis to, to test further. And also incidentally, if this were the United States, although they have reasonably articulable suspicion for the investigation, they do not have probable cause for an arrest. So they would not have a basis based on what they saw to take him down for a blood draw, for example. He hasn't confessed to drugs, they haven't found drugs, they don't have drug testing tests, they aren't able to extend the stop any further because they don't have a basis to extend the stop. So again, by parallel to US law, this looks pretty well, although the cops have a more friendly demeanor. So a interesting roadside stop to be sure. And that brings us to the end. I've been on Civil Law for Attorneys React. Please remember to hit that subscribe button so you learn about all of our stuff and check out my channel on Civil Law as well, where you can learn all about great constitutional law cases in the United States. I'll talk to you guys soon. Big Verdict.